All right, next day. So, hey, we're going to knock the oil pan off of this thing today. Um, it's still seized. I didn't think it would actually loosen up overnight with a bunch of uh, stuff in the cylinders. But we'll knock a, we'll knock one piston out at a time until we get them out. We're not reusing them anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I was going to spin the engine over, but because of residual oil and, and uh, you know, antifreeze and stuff, I'm just not going to. So basically what we'll do here real quick is we'll just uh, take a quick peek. But underneath here, you have on each side, you have nine bolts. On each end, you have a, you have a half inch bolt. Okay, now yeah, my flashlight's dead. And in the middle, there's seven that are going to be 716s. So nine aside, both ends are half inch, middles are 716s. I'm going to buzz this pan off the way it is so I can capture all the oil. So I'll do it on the side here, then I'll, I'll roll over the other side. And then we can leave it at the bottom and I can just collect any more debris that falls in there. So uh, let's get this pan off. All right, we got the oil pan off. There's a little more stuff inside of it than there ordinarily would have been. One of the reasons I like to keep the engine the way like I say with the oil pan still down, is there's always residual, so when you spin the engine over, you'll start spilling everywhere. I'm not saying that I didn't, but it just uh, keeps your work area a little bit more tidy if you have a tight workspace like I do. We were lucky up front, we had uh, we had the crank at the bottom of the stroke here, so we like to do we like to pop pistons out when we have this, and we like to put them in when our crank is in that position. So we were able to knock out uh, one and two. They weren't the ones that were uh, locked in there. They came out relatively easily. Even though they're just full of a little bit of garbage. But it wasn't, uh, these aren't the two causing problems. One of the other things when you're pulling your engine apart, it's not imperative. If you have uh, number stamps, you can go ahead and uh, number your, uh, your rod and your bearing cap. If not, make sure you keep them together. The, the ones that came apart together. And your machine shop can do it. So, but I, I had some here, so I just did it here. So we're going to continue to try and knock this apart. Um, so we can only take out the ones we can get access to. Obviously, we, uh, we can't get those two out because this one will hit the block before the, the rod bolt would ever get past the crank. This one, I can't get the other nut. We'll just have to kind of pick and choose which way we're going to go here and which ones we can get out. And we're going to have to keep trying to work it over so we can get, get it to turn over. Okay, so we have some success here. What we found was number five is the one that sees badly. So by taking the bolts off, the ones I could get off, and removing a couple more of the pistons, we kind of established that was the one. So we were able to turn it to, say, get this one out. I'll be able to turn it now and get that one out. I'll be able to get this one out just by undoing this cap. It's just kind of a process of elimination trying to figure out which one is the one locking everything up. If it's, you know, more than one, it's a little bit tougher. Um, we had a couple, but this is this is the tightest by, by quite a margin. So we're gonna keep going and knocking it apart. As a tech tip here, um, the dipstick. So this tube, this guide tube, all I ever really do with these is I just kind of put an extension over it and give it a tap. That tube will then knock out the dipstick without damaging it if you want to keep it and try and reuse it. And you can just uh, give the tube a little tap, remove it from there, and there you go. So, tech tip for you for people that didn't know that. Anyway, I'm going to keep knocking this apart. So we can get it ready to package up. Okay, for anybody that doesn't pull off harmonic bouncers regularly and they're a little unsure, this is a, I don't know, three bolt puller. So this one will, it has an end, it just slips in, all right. And what this does is it'll, it'll protect the holes inside here where the threads go. This is bigger, as you can see by the ridge here. This is where it contacts the crankshaft. It won't go inside and damage your threads, okay? So, like I say, it's a three bolt. What, what the whole idea of put, pulling something off that's uh, got an interference fit is generally just pull it off evenly, okay? So we'll do it real quick here. Um, I don't want to take up a whole bunch of time. I, I, like I say, some of these videos seem to 
create a little bit of things. I don't want to waste a bunch of people's time, so I'll just do this real quick. Live. No cuts or additions. So again, evenly um, being pulled would be the would be the key here. So best way you can figure that out is just uh, screw it in a little bit. You want them all contact at the same time, just like that. I'm gonna use my power tool. That's my bottom. I'm just gonna use my little three eighths one. My three eighths uh, battery powered Milwaukee. You don't need to use a half inch. And of course, you'd be tightening this in. I just got the right socket. All right, you got the right socket. So you notice just because it's steam and pull, it'll come off slowly. It is an interference fit, probably six to eight valves. Battery's dying. So, there we go. We, uh, like I explained earlier, this will go inside and bugger up the threads. There's no problem. So, I hope that helped. We'll carry on taking it apart. We're going to pull the camshaft out real quick. So, make sure your lifters are out. Make sure your fuel pump push rod is out. Um, you can use bolts. Some people use bolts, some people use a handle. I just bolt on, uh, the gear and uh, do it that way. We're going to uh, continue taking this apart and try and get the number five piston out. Hey guys, we're just winding this video down. We uh, we have the engine apart. We're moving everything over over there with the cylinder heads and the crankshaft. We'll get ready to get rid of it uh, or send it out on Monday. Uh, I guess uh, it'll be Tuesday. This is a long weekend. Here's a uh, number five piston. It was the hardest one to get out by quite a margin. It was really stuck in there too. It was uh, quite the fight to get it out of there. Nothing else really to report. Pretty basic teardown. Uh, we had to number the main caps. One, two, three, and four. They weren't numbered. Other than that, we're going to uh, send it in. We're going to order all the parts we need in the meantime. And uh, that's everything for the build. Like carburetor kit, exhaust manifold, studs. Everything that we need as well. You know, plugs, wires, cap, rotor. We'll go through the distributor again real quick, and uh, we'll just add some new parts to it. Anything that you want to know or you want to see, let me know. And other than that, thanks for watching. I hope uh, I hope there's a little bit of information here that somebody could use. And uh, we'll be back soon with part three.